exciting news from the world of prehistory today. A new study provides groundbreaking insights into the early presence of hominins in Eurasia, presenting evidence from the site of Grăunciano in Romania, which dates to at least 1.95 million years ago. This site challenges the conventional understanding of hominin dispersal outside of Africa, previously anchored around the well-documented site of Dmanisi in Georgia, dated to between 1.85 and 1.77 million years. Through a multidisciplinary approach, including taphonomic analysis, radiometric dating, and isotopic studies, the research establishes Grauncano as a critical locality for understanding early Pleistocene hominin activity and dispersal into Europe. Now, you might be a little confused about this term hominin because um, this was usually called hominid, which uh, I think is a better known term, but now for clarity, we use the term hominid to describe the group consisting of all modern and extinct great apes, that is, not only modern humans, but also chimpanzees, gorillas, orangutans, plus all their immediate ancestors. And we have the term hominin, which describes the group consisting of modern humans, extinct human species, and all of our immediate ancestors, including members of the uh, Homo subgroup, as well as Australopithecus, Paranthropus, and Ardipithecus. Let's talk about the site. Grauncano is located in the Oltets River Valley, south of the Carpathian Mountains, and it is well known for its rich deposits of vertebrate fossils from the early Pleistocene. The site was initially excavated in the 1960s, and it is one of the best known sites from East Central Europe from the early Pleistocene. The study focuses on cut marked bones from the fossil assemblage as evidence of hominin presence. A detailed taphonomic analysis of 4,524 specimens from the site identified 20 bones bearing marks consistent with hominin activity. So essentially they were made by the first humans, so to speak. These marks, primarily linear in nature, were categorized into three groups. High confidence cut marks, these would be seven specimens, probable cut marks, 12 specimens, and ambiguous marks, one specimen. The high confidence marks were found on anatomical locations such as humeri, tibiae, and mandibles of large herbivores, where defleshing activities would typically occur. The analysis employed rigorous qualitative methods, including observing the trajectory, morphology, and surface characteristics of the marks, supplemented by quantitative analysis using 3D optical profilometry. This technique allowed the team to differentiate cut marks from other linear modifications such as tooth marks or trampling with a high degree of statistical confidence. Although no hominin remains or lithic tools, so stone tools, were recovered at the site, the presence of cut marks aligns with other sites of similar age where butchery evidence is the primary, ind primary indicator of hominin activity. This evidence strengthens the argument for early hominin involvement at the site. To determine the age of the site, the study employed uranium-lead dating of mammalian fossils, focusing on dental specimens. This dating is particularly effective for fossil sites, where direct radiometric dating of sediments is not really feasible. Nine specimens from Grauncano and nearby localities were analyzed, yielding an average corrected age of 1.95 million years. Some samples indicated potential ages slightly exceeding 2 million years, although the tighter clustering of dates supports the 1.95 million years estimate. This makes Grauncano one of the earliest well-dated sites in Europe with evidence of hominin activity. The dating results are consistent with biochronological estimates based on the fossil assemblage, which includes taxa characteristic of the late Villafrancian period, which would be approximately between 2.2 million years and 1.9 million years. The fauna at Grauncano includes species such as mammoths, rhinoceroses, graphids, giraffids, large herbivores alongside rarefines like pangolins, as well as beavers and some terrestrial monkeys. The faunal composition, in other words, supports the early Pleistocene dating. 
The study also incorporates stable isotope analyses of fossil horse teeth from Glowon Channel to reconstruct the climate and paleo environment. The isotopic data derived from oxygen and carbon ratios reveal a temperate and seasonal climate during the early Pleistocene occupation of the site. Oxygen isotope values suggest that winters were relatively wet, with increased precipitation contributing to aquifer recharge, while summers were arid. These findings align with the environmental setting of a forest steppe, characterized by open grasslands interspersed with woodlands or water sources. Carbon isotope values indicate that the vegetation was predominantly of cooler and wetter environments with some drought stress evident in summer months. The environmental data are supported by the presence of warm adapted fauna, such as pangolins and ostriches, which suggest mild winter temperatures despite the overall seasonality of the climate. The findings thus emphasize the adaptability of these early hominins to varied and fluctuating environments. The site is analyzed within the broader context of early hominin sites across Eurasia and Northern Africa. The study identifies 49 early Pleistocene localities, 16 of which potentially predate the Tmanisi site from Georgia. These sites provide evidence of hominin activity through fossil remains, lithic tools, and animal bones bearing cut marks. However, few of these sites actually combine all three lines of evidence. Gronciano stands out for its precise dating and comprehensive taphonomic analysis, making it quite important for the study of early hominin dispersal. The findings challenge the notion that hominin presence in Eurasia was restricted to the Middle East and Southwestern Asia until around 1.8 million years. Instead, they support the idea that hominins dispersed widely across Eurasia by at least 2 million years. Potential dispersal routes into Europe include pathways uh, across the Middle East and around the Black Sea, or through the Anatolian land bridge. The study emphasizes that such uh, dispersal was likely episodic and closely tied to favorable environmental conditions during interglacial periods. So why is this study important? Well, the evidence from this site significantly advances our understanding of early hominin behavior and ecology. The findings highlight the environmental flexibility of these early human beings who adapted to temperate and seasonal climates in Eurasia. This flexibility coupled with evidence of butchery and resource exploitation underscores the adaptive success of early hominins in colonizing new and challenging environments. Secondly, the study also raises important questions about the taxonomy of early hominins in Eurasia. While many early Eurasian fossils are attributed to Homo erectus, the possibility remains that other hominin species, for example, Homo habilis or Homo rudolfensis, may have been involved in these early dispersals. Further research is uh, necessary, especially in underexplored regions. However, Homo erectus, I think, remains um, the uh, most suitable option. But like I said, um, it, we do have the possibility that other uh, species also contributed to, to the situation. In conclusion, the site of Graunciano represents a pivotal one in the study of early hominin dispersal into Europe, and uh, the methods are also uh, noteworthy. This combination of precise dating and taphonomic evidence and uh, environment, environmental reconstruction, they all provide a compelling case for the widespread presence of hominins in Eurasia by 1.95 million years. This discovery not only redefines the timeline of these early human beings, of early human migration, but also highlights the complexity and adaptability of early hominin populations. So just to make it clear, if you want to ask what uh, evidence for what human species we have evidence from the site. Um, we don't really have that. There are no fossils retrieved from the site. What we do have is evidence of human-like activity. In the description, you can find a link to the full article published in the uh, Nature Journal. And uh, you can also find an interesting uh, timeline of all human uh, species from the American Museum of Natural History. So have fun with that.
So this is kind of like the current state of affairs. Uh, probably new discoveries will be made. Thus, um, the need to constantly update. But uh, yeah, that's uh, how science uh, works. Quick end note before a bunch of over-enthusiastic Romanians jump out to claim that this is proof that Romania is the cradle of all human civilization. And I know this is something that's going to happen. Please don't just stop. We're not even talking about Homo sapiens here, so our own species, uh, let alone a modern nation. Trying to force such connections is beyond ridiculous and merely an attempt to instrument science for nationalistic purposes. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please smash the subscribe button and uh, leave me a comment or a like. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. It was, uh, again, um, one attempt to diversify a little bit the content with some uh, interesting archaeological news. Thanks a lot for watching and till next time.